Let's look at the intermolecular forces for Cl2. This is diatomic chlorine. It's also called chlorine gas or molecular chlorine. So let's look at the intermolecular forces using the flow chart here. First question, are there ions present? Do we have a negative or a positive? We don't. So there are no ions present. We can just get rid of this whole piece here. Next, we need to know if there are polar molecules present. And we really need a Lewis structure to do that. So let's put a Lewis structure for Cl2 over here. And if we look at polarity, we're talking about a difference in electronegativity. Here we have two chlorine atoms, so there's no difference. So we don't have polar molecules present. So this part here, we're not going to follow that. We're going to come over here and go down, and it tells us that we have London dispersion forces for Cl2. We have a sample of Cl2. The attraction between the chlorine molecules, that'll be London dispersion forces. So with London dispersion forces, we have temporary dipoles that get set up between these nonpolar chlorine molecules, and that will induce a dipole in another chlorine molecule, and then they'll be slightly attracted. For chlorine gas, Cl2, it's not huge. It's normally a gas because that attraction isn't really big. But it's enough if you cooled it down, you could make chlorine gas into a liquid fairly easily. This is Dr. B discussing the intermolecular forces for Cl2. There really is only one, that's the London dispersion forces. Thanks for watching.